Everybody's looking good today. Welcome everybody. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is November 15th, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And uh, <clears throat> this is a special watch with uh, Susan and myself uh, leading. And what we are uh, discussing today is going to be a continuation of the journey which we had during the last session and uh, insights on corporate prayer. For this session, we're going to focus on some of the practical aspects of developing corporate prayer. And uh, the good news is you don't have to have read uh, the chapter in Unleashed to participate in this session. We're really looking forward to what God will be revealing in this hour. <clears throat> and we uh, hope to have a good discussion about what, about some of the practical aspects of going forward with uh, corporate prayer. Re just remembering that um, we're in a major battle, and this is something that we have to be aware of, uh, that it's not just, you know, a good idea, <clears throat> corporate prayer is just not, not just a good idea, and you grab some people together and start praying. We have to understand that the enemy mm -hmm. is full on wanting to disrupt and, uh, um, and stop it at all costs, be because corporate prayer is so vitally, vitally important in, in advancing the kingdom. But we're all um, watchmen and we're all mighty warriors and we have been in many battles before. So we understand this, but it doesn't hurt to be reminded uh, <clears throat> of this. So we're uh, happy to have you all with us today. Susan, do you have some uh, comments you want, want to make before we start the worship, worship time? Uh, no, let's open up in prayer and um, I'll move okay. right into worship. Okay, let's have um, uh, Margaret, uh, Greg. Margaret, do you want to unmute yourself and just uh, open us up in prayer, please? Yes, thank you, Fred. Father God, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for Fred and Stu and this, uh, the Global Watch, um, Watchman, Lord God, and this and all, all those on this call. Father, we ask you at this hour, Lord God, that you will equip us and give us fresh revelation, Father, about corporate prayer and how to take it to the churches, Father, to our churches. Open the hearts, Father, and show us, Lord God. Make us sensitive, Lord God. And, uh, and, and bless us all, Father, that we may know, that we may know, that this is what you are really calling the churches to do and how to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, Margaret. Well, I, I have a worship song and never walk alone that I hope sets our hearts on a pilgrimage this morning for what God has for us. Here we go. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you're so good to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who protects us. You provide for us. You love us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. And uh, you have new things for us that if we seek you out, we will find you. So we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you again for each person here. And thank you for a great hour ahead of us. Susan, do you want to just give us uh, yeah, so that we can get started here? Yeah, this is a follow through from last night. It became very obvious to us that God wanted us to um, uh, take a deeper dive into this and cast a bit more vision on what this chapter six is all about. And as I listened to people last night, I felt like I was hearing the voice of the end time messenger. We've all heard messages on the end time messengers, the um, people that will carry a message to the body of Christ in times when things get a little bit testy out there. And we are in those times. In fact, as we speak today, there's an atmospheric river going over Canada, dumping about uh, two feet of snow across the nation. And so when things like this happen, we are seeing God's finger move across the nations to catch our attention. And I just want to draw us back to Habakkuk 2 to keep things very simple this morning. 
I believe God wants to mantle us with revelation and mantle us with the uh, assurance that he is with us as end time messengers with a mission to the church. And um, Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, um, or let me start at 2.1. And I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. That's one of the key verses for all of us uh, for the global watch. But um, part two is just as important. And last night I felt like it was beginning to happen where people were taking the scroll and they were beginning to really run with this with the understanding of the importance of this message of the house of prayer being reestablished, reinstituted, revitalized in our lives and in our churches. Habakkuk 2.2 says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And I believe we are in an appointed time. The signs are all there and beckoning us forward. We're at the very early stages of this, but I believe we're here. And I just wanted to read another quote that I have here in um, uh, chapter six on building team leadership to encourage every one of us. And it's taken from a, a book by Albert Bors. Um, and he points out that while we may identify leadership with prestige and elite standing, the Bible generally commends leadership as a way to pursue justice. This point of view is communicated by the frequent selection of, of unattractive and unlikely leaders. Time after time, they had no obvious leadership qualities and came from out of the way places. In other words, people who would not necessarily stand out as seminary stars. He takes a little boy out on the backside of a desert who has fought the lion and the bear to deliver Israel. Jesus came to earth and he chose uneducated, unskilled men who when they spoke, they spoke with boldness and the people were amazed and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And as I fervently pray that for myself every day, God, help me to be bold for you. Help me confound the, the, the wise of this world with truth from the throne room. Help us be those who open eyes of the blind and then stop the deaf ears because God has strengthened our hands and made our feeble knees firm. So that's the message this morning that we want to spend some time praying into this because I'm going to tell you what, I, I really feel this, <clears throat> that bringing the message of the house of prayer to the established church will have varying degrees of receptivity and understanding. But I would encourage us all to be strong in this message. And that we, um, as the, the Global Watchmen, one of our messages is going to be reestablishing that house of prayer. Much of it that's out there now is outside of the mainline churches, at least here in America. And I believe it's, I think I see some nods elsewhere, but that's true in other countries as well. Um, but even looking at the literature on corporate prayer, you just try to find a few books on it and it's really not there. There's a lot of books on prayer. There's a lot of books on prophecy, but there really is a very few that really delve into the issue of the power and the importance of corporate prayer. So our discussion today, as we go into breakout groups, um, Fred, if you've got a, a couple of other comments, chip in now, but Let's talk, let's pray for one another uh, where there isn't any point of confusion or 
concern on how to step forward in your own local church. Let's talk about it in our small groups and pray for one another, pray for boldness, pray for uh, clarity, pray for the grace, because uh, we don't wanna send out a team that's gonna slam dunk pastors. That's not our, our mission. Our mission is to build up church such as it is. Uh, whether it's weak and, and you know resistant to prayer or whether it's ingratiating um, to a degree and really doesn't understand it, or whether it's a full-blown house of prayer embracing it. Our message is the same, to, ex to really bring this foundational stone back to the church. It is the foundation upon which his church would be built. And we, I can't get away from that. Uh, the commission is to make disciples of all nations, but the church's mission, first and foremost, is to be that house of prayer. Uh, Fred? Thank you, dear. Very important what you just said. I have just, I, I wrote out a few things that are just practical things, to re, just guidelines to remember in developing corporate prayer as we go forward. And we talked about some of them last night, but it doesn't hurt to repeat these things because it's, we have to get it, we have to, it has to be part of who we are so that we don't, we don't hesitate when we go forward. So there's a, a few uh, things, uh, several things to, in terms of developing corporate prayer that are important to remember. And one is because we're, you know, we're developing community, we just, with the people that we're praying with, we need to remember to speak life towards each other at all times. Um, that means that we're not talking about and agreeing with how bad things are, um, about how impossible the situation is, about how incredibly difficult everything is. We're, we're speaking scripture to each other. We're encouraging each other. We're prophesying over each other. We're declaring things, um, uh, you know, God's strength, his peace, um, just, you know, go through the, go through the scriptures, his strength, his peace, his favor, wisdom, protection over each other. And uh, as we were uh, mentioning last night, um, it is very important when we're praying over each other that we, uh, that we ask God to give us his heart for each other. And uh, we can't, we just, it's impossible to go wrong. It's impossible to not have a loving heart towards somebody if you ask God for his heart towards that person and you just pray it out. So this is very important to set the stage because what we're setting the stage for is agreement in prayer, is, is agreement with each other and agreement with God. And there is tremendous, tremendous power in agreement. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, Matthew um, 18 is, uh, is so powerful here. Power comes in agreement with two or three. It does not take a large group. And we just have to remember that. That's totally counterintuitive. We think that the more people that we have, the better or the more powerful it's going to be. That's not necessarily true. If we have more people who are all in agreement, that's great. But the bigger the group is, the harder it is for everybody to come into agreement. So, um, and, and you can do amazing exploits, incredible things with just two or three, with just a small group of people. So it's easy to, you know, have a, you call a prayer meeting and you're thinking that there's going to be a dozen people getting together. There turns out to be three or two or four. Excuse me. Um, and so it's easy to start to feel in the natural kind of disappointed. Oh, you know, what's going on? Am I doing something wrong? Sometimes God is doing a, he's making a, a Gideon move. He's just saying, hey, look, I don't want all these people. I want it just to be a few people and you come into agreement with me and we're going to have an amazing time. And so um, don't listen to the enemy when you don't have a large group. This is very important because it's going to happen. It's already happened to you before, but it's going to happen many times again. And it's nothing to be uh, upset about. Sometimes it's a massive blessing. Uh, also, you know, part of our, part of the, um, in the Global Watch, part of our uh, core values an important part of the core values is if you have a conflict with somebody, you need to resolve it quickly and directly with the person. Uh, this is so vitally important. 
it's important because um, oftentimes conflict happens when there's a misunderstanding. And most misunderstandings can be resolved if you take the time, you know, half an hour or an hour to just talk with the person, get their understanding of what happened or what's going on. And then you speak life over them and you, and you pray over it. Most conflicts can get resolved in half an hour or an hour if you just actually just talk about it directly and talk about it in a life-giving way. Um, this takes practice. It doesn't come easily. Susan and I are, are poster children for this. We spent many years trying to avoid conflict at all costs because we don't like it. And, uh, and we found that it actually ends up making things worse, not better, most of the time. So uh, if you have any questions about that, talk to us. We'll, 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 we'll give you our war stories. Anyways, uh, another thing. So speaking life, resolving conflict, power of agreement, um, giving testimony is also vitally important, uh, which, you know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which means that what he's done, he's ready to do it again. So when we give uh, testimony to answered prayer, we are giving glory to God. We're thanking him for what he's done. And it deeply encourages us and it enlarges our faith so that we're ready for the next, you know, for the next thing. So don't hesitate to give testimony, even if it seems like a small thing, even if you're not totally sure it's an answer to prayer, if it's heading in the right direction, it probably is. So um, that's very important. Finally, Number five is we need to really be careful when we're developing uh, corporate prayer to listen to the Lord and get guidance about how to go forward at each, each stage of the way. Each of us is in a unique situation, so developing corporate prayer is not a one-size-fits-all kind of a thing. But here's what we have. Here's the good news. We have the Holy Spirit who will guide us in what? All truth, Right. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Um, and God wants us to seek him out. Um, another verse that's very important is Proverbs 25, verse 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. So God loves it when we seek him out, when we're diligent and just saying, Lord, I don't know where to go. Uh, here's what I do know, but I want, I need you to guide us. I need you to speak to us. And when he speaks to us, in, he speaks to us individually, but he can also speak to us corporately and we can share with each other what the Lord is saying. This is very important. I'm telling you, we, you follow these simple things. You will not go wrong you will develop corporate prayer. It will be a blessing. And, and it will, things will happen in um, ways that you just don't know. You're just, you just will end, up, will end up marveling at the glory of God. What the, a thing that can often hold us up is when we are thinking about it, corporate prayer and developing it, we're thinking of it with a certain mindset. We have an idea about how it's going to happen. So often, God, uh, it just doesn't work that way. God has a different path that he's opening or in unexpected ways. But that's part of the excitement. That's part of the adventure of, uh, of what we're doing. And every one of you on this call, you would not be on this call if you weren't a pioneer, if you weren't a watchman <laughs> adventurer, if you, you know, uh, all of you get, uh, if you're like us, Susan and me, you get bored to death with, with the routine, with the same thing happening the same way all the time. You like a little thing that uh, kind of shakes you up and, and moves you forward so um and we will encourage you in that because uh there's tremendous testimony out there and god is going to build his church right and the gates of hades will not prevail against it that's his promise to us and all we have to do is walk in what he said so that's my story and i'm sticking to it all right susan do you have anything you want to add before we go to the well, that, that's spoken as, as a true encourager but as we go off into these small groups, really pray that the, mes what the message we're talking about, about reestablishing this foundation stone uh, and bringing it back to the church or reforming it in whatever way it happens, it's very simple. It's, it's so simple, it's profound. 
and uh, that I, my prayer is that we move forward with compassion um, for our local churches, for our local congregations or our communities, whatever you have there, that uh, compassion that would be the driving force. It was compassion that causes Jesus to weep over Jerusalem, but it was his passion that caused him to turn over the tables of the temple. And then what happened followed after that, there was healing in the temple. And I believe we're in the midst of that outpouring of compassion and the turning of the tables of the temple. We, God would not release this message <clears throat> until the time was right, uh, I believe. And I think the time is now for the message to be repenetrate the halls of our churches. And, uh, and I pray that this message brands our hearts with passion that energizes us, that encourages us, that empowers us um, to be bold <laughs> and compassionate at the same time. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's the challenge ahead, not to get bitter or you know, turned off by what isn't, but rather keep our eyes focused on what Jesus wants. Amen. All right, Susan, so let's go into the um, breakout sessions okay. and uh, uh, we'll take about 15 minutes. Yep. Uh-huh. Sounds good. Happy landing, guys, and have great conversations. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a vig vig vigorous conversation <laughs> in prayer time. Well, we had an amazing time in our room, that's for sure. We were just getting started. <clears throat> um, all right, so Sue, should we... Um, should we get some testimony from people in the in the? Um, yeah, absolutely. And how, I, many, how many rooms did we have? Three. Three. Okay, easy. All right, let's start with room one. Um, room one, Vic and Diane, give us your your report. Okay, Fred. Thanks. Um, yeah, we, we had a really good time with um, people being able to um, give us testimonies into prayer in their uh, home churches. Um, it was very encouraging, I thought, just to hear what's been going on and the kind of the determination, especially of, of some people to just stick with what God has given them in spite of difficulties. So I would say that was one of one of the main points that came out. And just encouraging to hear that, you know, people are being encouraged by being part of the Global Watch. Yeah. It's helping others to kind of move forward, to be encouraged, because I think one of the things that we certainly experience is that if you're an intercessor, you tend to be in the minority. And certainly in the place where we are, uh, it's been a case that intercessors have felt outside of the walls and lacking in support and encouragement. So I think that's one of the great things that you, Fred and Sue are doing. You're providing the kind of encouragement that intercessors need to keep going. So bless you both. Yeah, thanks Vic. I, I, you know, it's funny, but it is so encouraging to Susan to, and me to hear that people are encouraged, uh, you know, when they get on these calls, you know, we're, we're going forward with what we feel like the Lord is saying and what he's doing. But it's just great to get that kind of feedback because that's exactly what we want and what we want to do. And that, I think that the Zoom format provides a unique opportunity to do that because you may feel alone in your particular church or your, your situation, but you can get on these calls and be with like-minded people you know, across the nations. And uh, it's really an amazing, it's an amazing format, an amazing ability to do that. So it's great to hear. Thank you, uh, Vic. Okay, so let's go to room two. We have a spokesperson for room two. I think Don't everybody it's speak Marvie. up. <laughs> Go ahead, Margaret. Marvy, Marvy, not me. Marvy? I'll be happy to share for our group. <laughs> really, what Holy Spirit was emphasizing is patience and compassion. Many people in Global Watch, we have a passion to pray. It's one reason why we come to this Global Watch is because we have that calling on our life. But not everyone in the body is aligned in that way. And just that we would 
live the message that we want others to embrace. And often that is a laying down of our life of going lower and slower and just allowing the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do to let people to see that the most wonderful place is to be in that place of intercession and communion with God, letting him do the work by the power of his spirit in people's lives. It takes the pressure off of us to try and micromanage people within the body. It's freedom. So we just had a, a good time of sharing some testimony and praying for very specific situations that people are facing and just entrusting our lives to go lower, to allow passion, as Hannah said, to be, um, to be completely balanced by compassion, the mercy of God. Amen. Wow, great comments. Going lower and slower. Um, how uh, important it is to have patience, which um, uh, in my life so frequently that's in short supply. And, uh, and so that's a great, that's a great message. Thank you so much. Um, all right, let's go on to room three. We have a spokesperson for room three. I'm not sure, I think that may be us, but I'll speak anyway. <laughs> the Buddha nominated me. <laughs> Um, well, let me see if I remember everything we talked about. Um, Jackie talked about how, how her church is set up and how they, it's kind of like a home church where they just get together. There's not necessarily a pastor or a leader, or, um, but how they come together, they fellowship, they build a relationship, they pray together. Um, that's just an awesome picture um, of the body of Christ praying together. Um, I brought up a concern about, I think the same thing that Sheldon was saying, a little bit of the same thing that um, it's, I don't feel like it's enough to be a sideline prayer group. It's a good start, but ultimately I wish to see a body, the corporate body have developed a culture of prayer where the praying together is the function of the church being the ecclesia as much as it is to come together and listen, listening to teaching together and praying together, the acts to kind of list of things. And uh, let's see, Romania shared a little bit, uh, uh, Renata, about how their elders do come together. Because I was talking too about leadership must be involved and how their elders are the main core team of the uh, coming together and praying together twice a week. And then it's kind of all I remember. Sorry, group. <laughs> yeah, we shared about that. Well, that's, that's great. I, I think. Oh, that's and um, so critical is building relationship. Yeah, we talked about um, that. It's uh, it's not about a list of things to come and pray together. Um, that loving one another, caring, demonstrating that love and care for one another is also very important for the team. Wow, oh, very powerful, very, very important. And uh, when you said it's not enough to be a sidelined prayer group, that's, you may start off that way, but God does not want, I mean, God says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And so the, the, the thing that we need guidance on, we all need uh, to grow in this, I think, is that, you know, how does, how do you, we're, we're focused in our church on how can we have a culture, not just multiple prayer groups, but how can we have a culture of prayer in our church so that so that the first thing that people think about is to pray when they get together, not the last thing, or not just, you know, praying over meals, that kind of thing. And um, and it's a, it's, it's a challenge, but step by step, you know, this is the whole lower and slower uh, lesson that God is teaching us in this, is that the step by step, we're having more and more prayer uh, in our church and more and more of a sense of a desire for prayer and a desire of, uh, of coming together. And in the process, relationships are being built in a new way. But it's, uh, you know, it's been a, a process. Susan and I have been, in, as we have a, we're in a big church, we've been in our church for over 20 years. And um, we're just now starting to see things that are, are, are you know, re really some great breakthrough. I mean, there's been breakthrough in the past, but, um, but it is, uh, it, things just never seem to go as fast as you want them to go. 
uh, because you can see, because we're all prophetic and we can see ahead into what God wants to do in the future. And it's like, come on, people, can't you see what's going on? And of course, the answer is no, because not everybody has our giftings and not everybody is, you know, in the same place. And so that's where the humility and the, um, and the patience really has to come in. So, all right, great testimony, you guys. Susan, we're getting towards the end of the hour already. It's going so fast. And um, what would you like to say? What kind of comments do you have uh, before we close? Um, I'm just really, really encouraged. And I wanna encourage all of you that uh, we're, on a, we're on a mission um, and that this end time call of the watchman is real. And one other word that came, threaded through this conversation today was the word compassion. And I just want to give you a little story of the remnant and compassion that just happened to us um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm thinking about sending out a word on it, but um, <clears throat> we were doing the recording for IHOP KC for their 24 hour um, New Year's uh, presentation that's going to basically come from the Solomon Islands to the West Coast here. Um, those are the two bookends of this um, uh, 24 hour worship and prayer. So we were in the middle of this recording and um, all of a sudden, I, I can't tell you what it was, if it was spiritual or if it was physical or if it was just something I heard, but it was like a crack. I felt a crack, something cracked in the spirit. And afterwards, this, overwhelming sense of his presence and compassion filled me and I began to weep I like I I was like oh no I'm up next and I'm I'm losing it <laughs> and I, I cannot do what I, I'm you know I can't do this <laughs> of course I can't <laughs> but um, I turned around and looked at some of the other team there we were just a handful of people there and uh, another a couple of people were also weeping. One was in the corner sobbing and that, God, what are you doing? And all of a sudden I just felt this overwhelming sense of compassion. And so I said, hey, we're dropping everything and we're just moving into this. And I don't even know what we said. I don't even know how it turned out. <laughs> but the message is that the, I believe we're, we're on the forefront of a move of compassion. And as we pray for this restoration, the revitalization of the church as a house of prayer, I pray that compassion for God's church, Jesus's church overwhelms us. And that will keep us out of trouble with um, spiritual pride and all the, the crap that comes with that uh, over aggressive, you know, un, unkind words. Um, handle everything with care it's it's jesus responsibility but if he's given us a message it's our responsibility to begin to work it in our in, into our fabric into our communities of um of worship and uh, god will take care of the rest and we're here uh to be a punching bag <laughs> A cry on the lap <laughs> bag, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever you face out there, there's an answer. And we want, we want to be mature about it. We're sending out mature end time messengers that have a passion and a heart for seeing this restored. But I believe that we're on the verge of, you know, just as Jesus cried over Jerusalem, the other side of that was passion and the restoration of the church as a house of prayer, and then what? Healing. What are we facing globally? The COVID situation. Just beyond this, I think God is after the heart of the church. He's after the heart of the church through this. We're gonna be tested with it until the heart of the church is beating as a house of prayer. And then he's gonna come with tremendous healing. Already we're beginning to see that. It's not in the fullness. But I hope we take this with a, a message. Just read over, I think it's uh, Matthew 21 uh, as an assignment uh, for this week. And just ponder it because I think there's a message for the hour that we're in. I think Jesus is turning over the tables in, in the heavenly 
and he's asking who is going to hear me who is going to hear me because i'm coming to redeem my church amen amen that's great um uh you know what i'm just feeling the urge feeling the unction to um to pray for you uh jessica in hong kong so i'm just going to do that real quickly for the next minute or so and then um if we could have hannah if we could have you close us off if i'm done if you could close us off in prayer Father, I just thank you for Jessica. We just bless her in the name of the Lord, the great work that she's doing there in Hong Kong. We just say, Lord, she's um, she's so gifted with, um, she's so intelligent and she's got a tremendous prophetic gift, but also uh, the ability to just gather people together. And uh, in her uh, house church, we just declare increased wisdom, increased favor. Uh, let the joy of the Lord be her strength. And would you protect her and everybody in her group that, um, Lord, that would you show her that she's got influence far beyond uh, what it may appear on the surface. And, uh, and Lord, um, we just declare that she is a watchman over Hong Kong, over that entire uh, uh, city. And uh, Lord, would you show her, would you just show her that you want to bring tremendous breakthrough in that city, even with all the difficulties that are going on, with the, uh, the government situations and all of the various things, some of which we know, some of which we have no idea about. But Lord, you are wanting to glorify yourself in that city and you're gonna use Jessica, you are using her, but you're gonna use her in an even greater way in the future to do that. So we just bless her greatly. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. Go ahead, Hannah. I just love it when we track like this. I was thinking of Jessica just at the time you said that, Fred. And, and if I can just say two words too. Jessica, that little story you shared in our small group, that Gideon story, what he is so pleased about you is your obedience. He asked you a hard thing. That, that's how his ways are. They're so different than ours. And he puts you in a position to have to lead that out. And you were obedient. And that's how he can use you through these end times. When he asks strange things over Hong Kong, you will be a person who will just move with that. So bless you in that. Sue, when you mentioned that crack, I'm thinking of a word that's been released from Lana Vosser, who's a, a younger person. A prophetic voice I think in New Zealand or Australia about travail and it seems like the timing would be right at the time you heard that crack so I've been talking with a few people on the watch and travail is starting to break and it's going to bring a, another level of dynamic into the body that a lot of people who are uncomfortable with that level of passion uh, now we need to do some teaching and maybe explaining on what that's going to look like but I think that crack was saying here it comes folks <laughs> well, um, you know it, you know what happened at the moment of that crack I didn't know it at the time it's just that our sound guys had their phones on and they got warnings that a 6.4 earthquake had hit the Solomon Islands so the 24-hour thing two, two bookends met yeah slap and compassion and, passion that's what I'm seeing compassion and, yes. and passion yeah. are slamming yeah. up and yes. i just go father loose that over us as as uncomfortable as it may be at times and i know you're doing it in my life father i just i loose this too over my brethren father that you bring us into that place of prayer no matter what it's called no matter what it looks like no matter what it costs us in our soul or in our pride to release father that we align with your heart because your heart is so compassionate and so passionate right now for your bride and we want to return that to you as our bridegroom that's our heart's desire father and i i just pray and loose this over each one of us and myself included today in yeshua's mighty name amen Amen. amen. Everybody said amen. Everybody unmute yourselves. Wave to each other. Say bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. We love you. Bless 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 you.